My next guest is the CEO of Red Taylor uh, Insurance. Ironically, his name is Red Taylor, and he joins us right now. Red, I know that uh, insurance is your um, is your day job. You're also a wealth advisor. There's uh, there's a bunch of things that you're planning. Um, do you have any encouragement for people that are in Florida right now in the path of uh, Hurricane Ian? Yeah, thanks a lot. Great being here with you, Kevin, on such a solemn day. Uh, a lot of friends and family down in South Florida who are undoubtedly bearing the wrath of Hurricane uh, Ian. And what I could say, man, just right now, safety's first. Get get high and dry. Uh, hunker down and stay safe. Hopefully you guys have prepared with some you know, bottled waters, maybe some ice in your cooler, some, some non-perishable items to get through the next couple of 24, 48 hours yeah. while this power goes out and this water recedes back down. Hopefully this thing moves on out and, and everybody's able to start uh, the recovery process. Sadly, they're talking about maybe it uh, lessening and, and getting slower as it goes across the peninsula, which is kind of the worst uh, possible uh, type of situation. And then it, who knows if it hits the Atlantic and that water's warm enough, it could be shooting right up the uh, East Coast. Uh, they say Georgia and South Carolina might get direct hits. In fact, I, I saw one uh, weather forecaster today say that even New York City might be in the eventual path of it. We're just going to have to pray and believe for the best. Let me ask you, uh, shifting gears to uh, some other news today, uh, the, the president, you know, he's got 40 days to try to make the case to the country that his party should be sent back to the House and to the Senate. Uh, to be entrusted with what's uh, happening uh, in the economy. Um, and yet I'm hearing this discussion of whether or not his economy is creating what's called a housing depression. I'm curious if you're familiar with that term, if you could explain to us what it is, and do you think that in fact that is what he is causing? I am, Kevin, and, and you hit the nail right on the head. So uh, Biden's uh, failed economic policies are the direct result of this housing depression that we're in. You know, the last housing depression that we were in was in 07 and 08, and that was self-created by an out-of-control Congress as well. As a result of that, Congress went on, and, and the Fed, you know, they, they, they went on this easy monetary policy over the last decade, uh, 12 years, where money's been basically free. And now what we're seeing is because of the, the failed policies of Joe Biden, Nancy Pelosi, and the uniparty lifelong politicians up there in Washington, D.C., that we are in right now a full-blown housing recession. Let me give you some statistics that are going to blow your mind, okay? okay. If, if, if this is going to bring it down to the, the folks like you and I, the, the black and brown, the blue collar, the middle class Americans who are the backbone of this country in January of 2022, okay, just nine short months ago, the average home price sale in America was right at $400,000. Hmm. Interest rates were hovering at 2.93% right around there. So the, the mortgage for, for that family to be able to go and buy that house was right at $2,000 a month, $1,800, $2,000 a month with taxes and insurance. Fast forward to today, with all these policies that, 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 that Biden have put in, this, these, these geniuses up there have put in play to, to, to put us into this controlled demolition of the United States economy, Today, the interest rates touched, the mortgage interest rates touched 7% for the first time since 2000, 22 years ago. The, the, because of the supply chain shortages and inflation out the wazoo, that same $400,000 house now costs you $447,000. So if you have the, 80, the 20% to put a down payment on that home at 7% interest, that mortgage payment is now almost $2,700 a month. So that's an increase of 43% wow. in only nine months. Also, let's look at this, okay? So in order for the interest rates to get up to 6% this year, it took just over six months. So it went, basically went from 5% to 6%. It took right at six months, okay? For them to go from 6% to 7%, it took two weeks. So the economy, the buying power of the Americans are absolutely crashing at an alarming rate. 
Well, let me ask you, because of that, um, so that's, that's one significant caveat that I don't know how the president gets around that. Voters are going to go into the voting booth. They're going to know what they're paying or what they're going to be forced to pay because that's, that's, that's what's hitting them in the face every day. But when you add to it things like the student loan debt forgiveness, where you've got working class people basically being forced to pay for the, the master's and, and advanced degrees of doctors and lawyers and uh, graduate school students that wanted to study, uh, you know, uh, lesbian Olympics or, or whatever. Like th now they have to bear that burden as well. How much of these peripheral other things are going to are, are going to tack on to that reality of what the housing is is costing them? Yeah, great point. So the, the out of control spending by Congress has got to stop. And, and Patriots, we can we can fix this and we got to start fixing it on November the 8th. OK, we've got to get up there. We've got to get some folks in Washington, D.C. who are adults, who understand how the economy works, who understand what real monetary policy looks like. So listen, what we've got is that these guys, in order to try to buy votes, they're going out there. Look, our, our sovereign debt, our, our, we're over $31 trillion in debt two weeks ago. So they're borrowing money from the U.S. taxpayer, you and I, to go and pay for these entitlements that they think are going to be able to buy them votes. Votes In, in November, it's not going to work. Americans are too smart, okay? And, and not only that, we've got a, we've got a, a, a hard line stop on, on no, uh, September the 30th where the government runs out of money. So what are we going to do? They haven't even debated this thing in Congress yet. They don't even have an appropriations bill prepared. So they're going to pass some kind of a short term resolution so they can go and pay out all of their cronies again, all their lobbyists, all their cronies, because they know that they're fixing to get voted out. And what's the Fed going to do? Well, they're going to have to print more money into an inflation, stagflation and recession. Yeah. Now, I don't see the good news out there. And look what's going on down in Florida right now that could go all the way up the eastern seaboard and coast of the United States with devastation uh, to folks' home and property. Uh, it's, uh, I, I wish I had better news, but what we have to do is we have to get these folks out of there. Patriots have to show up on November 8th. They have to vote with their pocketbooks. Two things, inflation, immigration. And that's it. If all of these mega, for, uh, mega, uh, 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 you know, these, these American first candidates, these mega candidates that are out there, if they'll focus on the economy, inflation, immigration, then we're going to see a huge red wave come in November. The 8th. Well, and I, th I think that they are. And I think that we passed the temptation point a couple of weeks ago, uh, f post Mar-a-Lago raid, where the former president had the chance to say, I'm going to start making it all about me, or I'm going to I'm going to keep message discipline and keep these guys disciplined. What I'm seeing from Lee Zeldin in New York and Carrie Lake in Arizona and Ron DeSantis in Florida, and they're going to be at the top of the ticket as the, as the governor candidates, is they're saying, hey, it's all about crime in our cities. It's all about the economy and how people have, you know, you're poor if you saved all your money. If you just saved every dime you had from the time that Biden came into office, you're like $4,200 in the hole. Uh, from from where you started, so it's uh, it's message discipline, and I do think that uh, you're onto something. They've got it. They've got to grind it home. And I am so thankful that there are some America First candidates out there that are really t they're not just put you know allowing the uh, journalists uh, to you know ask them the, the silly questions about law enforcement, disliking people of color. No, Carrie Lake's coming right back at him and saying, no, uh, we we deserve law enforcement for everyone. Everyone wants low crime in their community. Everyone wants to have a better outcome. Crime Crime, economy, immigration, fentanyl. I mean, the list is so long, but if they stay on message discipline, I think we're going to have a good outcome come November 8th.